This is a, a deep toe system, a deep toe 2, and it's manufactured by Edgetech. Edgetech are the world leading manufacturers in, in side scan sonars and indeed deep toe, uh, um, toe fish. We've named her Spero, which is Latin for uh, hope, because we hope to find the, the debris field. She's a long vehicle, she's uh, about three and a half meters long, and she's rated to 6,000 meters, so we can go all the way down to as far as we need to go with this vehicle. Well, this is the nose of the vehicle, well, that's the stern of the vehicle, so on the nose, this is how we tow her, so this is the tow lines, and this is the fiber optic umbilical, which is where all the data comes up to the surface. So we tow from this point here, this is how we navigate the vehicle. A key part of any search is knowing where have we searched, to know that we've searched the right areas. This is an acoustic beacon called the USBL, it's a Norwegian manufacturer called Konsberg, and this um, uh, pushes out a pulse of sound to the surface uh, about 10 kilometers away, the ship's 10 kilometers from the vehicle, and then they can communicate with each other and they tell each other where they are, so we know where they, always know where the fish is relative to the ship. Uh, so that's called a USBL system, ultra short baseline. The, the side of the vehicle is, is really the heart of the vehicle in, in many respects. This is the side scan sonar, this does all the looking. So the side scan sonar pushes sound out through the side, out to the side to the port and starboard side of the vehicle and she shines uh, acoustics out about a kilometre on each side. Underneath the uh, vehicle we, we have mounted a, a Konsberg, it's a Norwegian system again, a Konsberg EM2040 which is the Rolls-Royce of multi-beam sonars. The uh, multi-beam actually pushes sound out, uh, an array of uh, sound underneath in a wedge form, and uh, we get uh, 400 observations underneath the vehicle, which we can use also to search for the debris field. This is uh, also read to 6,000 meters, and uh, that provides us the, a, a full insonification of the seafloor from the, the starboard side out a kilometer to the port side a kilometer and underneath the fish. So that gives us full insonification where we go. That's a, that's a critical uh, factor in, in the search. Inside here, if we look inside the vehicle, while well, we said this is the heart of the vehicle, this is the engine room. This is where all the electronics works. These are all titanium housings inside here to hold all the electronics. This is a sound velocity profiler, which measures uh, some environmental information, such as temperature, salinity, uh, pressure, which is the depth, how far down we are. Uh, we have an altimeter here. So this is an auxiliary altimeter. The altimeter actually tells us uh, how, how high the fish is off the bottom, and that's critical uh, when we're going over these very steep terrains to know how high we are off the bottom. We typically fly around 100 to 150 meters off the bottom. Inside the vehicle, we have a teledyne system, an American system once again, uh, which is an inertial navigation system, and that helps us know exactly where the vehicle is on the seafloor. So it's, it's critical um, because we have such a wide area to search to actually align each survey line adjacent to the previous one so we have no gaps in between the, the survey lines. If we come up the vehicle a little bit, you see lots of um, foam. This is called syntactic foam. Uh, this allows the vehicle to be just slightly positively buoyant, about 16 kilograms positive. So should we lose the vehicle and we, we break the tow rope, the vehicle will naturally float to the surface. The other reason we have a slightly positively buoyant is we have a large depressor weight and the, the vehicle flies just slightly above the depressor weight in the water so when we're steaming along the depressor's down here and the towfish is just above to once again protect the vehicle from hitting the seafloor. It's just a few meters above the depressor but it's enough to give us a margin of safety. The syntactic foam is read 6,000 meters and even though these things look like plastic blocks they're actually incredibly heavy. They're slightly lighter than water but not by much and that's why there's an awful lot of them inside the vehicle. Coming up a little bit further, when the vehicle's on the surface, we have an Iridium satellite system, so should we lose the vehicle and she pops up, she'll actually do an ET and phone home. There's a strobe light and we have a VHF antenna as well, so it gives us a chance of finding the vehicle should she pop up to the surface somewhere out in the open ocean. We have the other end of the soft door cable here, which comes to something we call the depressor. This is 850 kilograms of, of lead weight and that drags the deep toe towards the seafloor. The, the uh, fiber optic cable from the soft toe comes into a pressure compensated housing in the back of the towfish here and that's where we do the fiber optic terminations. And from that point we go up the triple armor coated umbilical. And here we have the main tow cable. Uh, she's um, an American cable manufactured by Rochester. It's triple armor coated, it's got three fibers and three electrical conductors inside her. This particular cable I'm holding onto is 10,500 meters long and it can tow the entire rig underwater for a month at a time. So this is a key part of the search.
Because moving up to the other end of the, of the tow cable, we have a, a very large uh, mechanical winch. It's, a, it's a, called a traction winch. It's manufactured in the United States by Dynacon. And these guys are the gold standard in, in traction winches. This is the traction part of the winch, which takes all the load. We have such a massive load when we have nine and a half kilometers of cable out the back that we cannot feed directly into a, onto a standard direct pull winch. We actually have to take the load through the traction system here. So the, the whole wheels just actually work on friction to take the strain of the cable, and then we feed it onto a large storage reel. So the cable comes through the traction system, which takes all the load off. And then it comes through the level winder. The level winder moves up and down here slowly, very carefully, and lays the cable beautifully into the storage reel so we get nice, neat lines. And that means the cable doesn't get damaged when she's in storage. This is the right piece of kit for the job because oh, we're using the, the leading manufacturer of sonars. They're the, they're the most widely used manufacturer in the world. They have the best sonars in the world. The Konsberg uh, multi-beam underneath, that's well, widely regarded as the best multi-beam in the world. The inertial system is the best one in the world. These vehicles uh, are in uh, mass production. They're the most widely used vehicles in the world. So we have that reliability, we have the spare parts, and we have the, the trained people who know how to use these vehicles.